Uh, good morning, Don. How are you? Oh, great, thanks. Good to see you again, Jack. Yeah, I've uh, been reading about you in in the news, and I just had a couple of questions about what what uh, your company is up to at this moment. I, I was I'm particularly interested in your um, relationship uh, with the coal uh, industry uh, because I'm uh, involved as a contractor to the Department of Energy on on uh, rare earth projects related to coal. I'm a peer reviewer. I look at uh, they call me and ask for reviews of projects and, and uh, situations. So um, it's a very active uh, area and certainly flying a little below the, po- the radar, the public's radar, because there's a great deal of uh, cynicism that, oh, you can't produce rare earths from coal. Uh, in my opinion, that is not correct, but uh, I'm wondering uh, what, what, uh, what Avalon is going is going to bring to this uh, uh, very uh, active national project in the states? Well, I didn't have much awareness of uh, this interest in recovering rare earths from coal until this summer, when I was actually approached by this group, uh, private company out of the states that mm-hmm. uh, inherited this closed. Uh, coal mine site in southern Illinois and through basically serendipity had discovered there was some rare earth enrichment in the in the waste there and um, but they didn't know anything about the rare earth business so they asked around for amongst their network of friends who they could talk to about it and found me and so I was happy to uh, to talk about it and the more I learned about what they have there the more intrigued I got with the possibilities there that this could offer in terms of potentially a a very low cost simple extraction process technology to recover the rare earths something that would be very innovative and set a new precedent for the whole industry on how rare earths can be recovered simply and a much lower cost than the traditional solvent extraction methods. Uh, I, I agree with that. And I, I, when people question me about this in, in, internally in the U.S. government, I always tell them, what's the most expensive part of a mine, of a rare earth mine? It's the mine. It's, for, <laughs> developing a mine is hundreds of millions and even bigger numbers with a B just just to dig holes in the ground and get everything permitted and organized. So the the coal people internationally, they of course that's what they already have. And not only that, they have a natural method of concentration that's called burning and they, they can't throw away the waste so they collect it all. And of course since the typical coal deposits, and I'm not familiar with the ones you're working on, but typically they contain three to 600 parts per million rare earths in the coal. Well, when you burn the coal, that that multiplies quite nicely because, of course, almost all of the, the carbon is gone when, when, when you're done. So yeah. uh, it's a natural method of concentrating. And the issue is, of course, you have to process extract the material and separate it so um i'm i i'm not aware of any uh actual rare earth company such as yours being involved at this point there there may be but i'm not aware of them and and so i'm i'm very intrigued and i'm certainly going to follow uh what you're going to what you're doing with these people because i think uh, it was very smart of them to to contact somebody with uh, as much experience as you have now um, what's happening also now to change subject a bit, Don, what's happening at Naturalogico? I know, I know you've got also got an Australian uh, partner out there, but I'm not clear as to what, what's going on there development wise. Uh, so we're basically moving forward with the original, um, plan we developed with them, which was to start with a very small scale project to develop a resource in a separate deposit that occurs on the property a small satellite deposit called the t-zone that had some work done on it historically where there's a small but very interesting uh, resource very rich in uh, bassesite in a pegmatite where the mineralogy is so simple we can make a concentrate with just 
using sensor-based ore sorting technology, which makes it very low cost to implement and relatively easy to permit because you're not creating any toxic waste or anything like that that creates a uh, environmental uh, concern. So we're moving forward on that uh, quite quickly, actually. Uh, we'll have an update we'll put out next week on where that is all at. But um, we think it could be possible to get something started there in as little as a year and start to show the world how you can do things a little bit differently to um, uh, start a new rare earth supply chain outside of China. Uh, I, that's very good because what the United States, I think, about a century ago, some some politicians said well, what the United States needs is a good five cent cigar, and I think right we might say right now is what the United States need is uh, is rare earth mines in in development and actually in production that would be real good. And notwithstanding what many in the the press say, the, the there is a, a very large. Uh, interest in Washington and getting something like this going. And uh, not because you've asked, but because everybody's asking me this, as far as they're concerned in, in Washington, Canada is perfectly okay as a domestic supplier. I, I get a kick out of this because uh, many years ago, when I first started working with the Department of Defense, they would look at me and say, Canada, uh, where's that? Okay, they, they thought they were being real cute. Now, the question, I was in a meeting in Washington two, three weeks ago. The question came up to somebody very important. He said, well, what about, you know, most of the projects in development are in Canada. And, and so he said, well, that's perfectly okay. And I said, it's perfectly okay. It used to be, it wasn't. He said, well, now it is. He says, as far as we're concerned, anything done in Canada it is, it is considered domestic from, from our point of view. So um, there's certainly going to be a lot of interest in what you're doing and your timetable, if that's correct, of a year uh, puts you very far ahead of the pack. So uh, that's good. And uh, what I can tell you is that there's a lot of interest in uh, Canada now in government circles on seeing how they can help in establishing these new critical minerals uh, supply chains following up on the meeting that uh, our prime minister had with uh, with the president earlier uh, this year and they are working hard on trying to come up with a strategy on this and to their credit they're reaching out to people like me asking for ideas and suggestions on what they can do to help facilitate creation of these supply chains and the main message I'm uh, giving back to them is is that where every new uh, aspiring producer needs help is on defining the appropriate extraction and processing technology and getting access to demonstration scale plants to prove that process. And um, that's starting to resonate, actually. I'm optimistic that we may see some um, action in government circles to perhaps uh, create such a facility uh, to serve our interests here in Canada and maybe elsewhere. I, 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 I know you're, you're correct, and in fact, in, in both governments, there's in, very much interest in, in this uh, demonstration plan, as you're saying. And I, I happen to know that one or two are underway. So this is really happening. And uh, just uh, as a final statement, let, let me say, I'm trying to think of how to say this without, without being taken to the stockade at Fort Leavenworth. Um, <laughs> l l let's say that the President of the United States will directly address this issue shortly. Uh, I'm not saying he's going to make a public statement, but he will be actually discussing rare, the rare earth issues uh, very shortly now. So this is, this is really happening. And uh, don't let anybody kid you. This is not a uh, political five minutes or anything like that. Uh, there's enormous pressure in Washington to get this done. And there's pressure in Ottawa to get it done. And as you know, Don, there's plenty of demonstration uh, processing projects that could be uh, uh, done in Canada if it were just a little bit of financing. And I, I honestly believe that the Canadian government and the American government are going to get behind this. 
We're well aware of that and the interest in the U.S. government circles. And that's one of the reasons I was very interested in an opportunity to participate in something Mm -hmm. like this coal mine waste uh, project in the U.S. And um, I'm fascinated with it, actually. And adding to what we were talking about earlier on that, the thing that intrigued me about this project that's a little different than the scenario you were describing is I know there's been a lot of research on recovering the rare earths from the fly ash waste. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, and this is an example, um, there is rare earths in solution in the acid mine drainage. Mm -hmm. And this company discovered this by treating the acid mine drainage uh, with lime to precipitate the out sediment and neutralize the acidity. And and so sampling those precipitates discovered very high levels of rare earth enrichment. So that's what's kind of um, created the opportunity. And alluding back to the cost that you mentioned earlier, a new rare earth mine, in a case like this, basically Mother Nature's done most of the work for you mm-hmm. already in getting them into solution. Um, can you tell me, Don, is, are the rare earths presenting in the remaining liquid, or are they going into the sediment in the case of where these fellows are treating the acid mine drain? Well, those? that's we're just starting to do some work. Oh. It's so new, and in, we've, uh, we're doing some sampling now to kind of better understand okay. how this whole system is working um, and where the rare earths are coming from. But uh, the interesting thing is it can probably be uh, brought along very quickly, similar to what we're trying to do on our project in Northwest Territory. Well, all I can say is you're you're definitely on the cusp of the wave, Don. This is this is really happening, and I don't know anyone else as far along with it in Canada as you are. We've spent a lot of time thinking about innovative processing uh, technologies mm-hmm. in this space, and mm-hmm. I'm excited to see that we have an opportunity to try and implement this now. Good. Well, uh, thank thank you very much for the update, Don, and we'll let's keep in touch. Absolutely.